Little Fox. Journey to the West, Chapter Ten: The Powerful Sage. How will we defeat Sun Wukong? Moaned the Jade Emperor. I sent our entire army, and they couldn't arrest him. Perhaps we can ask the sage Erlang to capture him, said Guan Yin. Yes, said the Jade Emperor. Erlang is very powerful. He turned back to the messenger. Go to Plum Mountain. Ask Erlang if he'll help us. Wukong stood in front of the waterfall with his cheering subjects. Our king has just defeated an entire army from heaven," said the Gibbon. "I hope the Jade Emperor learned his lesson," said Wukong. "He and his army are no match for Sun Wukong." A deep voice boomed. Wukong looked up. A large man was coming down from the sky. The apes and other monkeys ran and hid. I am Erlang," said the man. "The Jade Emperor sent me to arrest you." Wu Kong <laughs> laughed. The Jade Emperor's entire army couldn't defeat me. What do you think you're going to do? I am going to take you back to heaven," said Erlang. "And you will be punished." Waving his iron bar, Wu Kong leaped at Erlang. Clang! Erlang blocked the bar with his sword and then struck back. Wu Kong jumped onto a cloud to get out of the way. Erlang leaped into the air. He shook his body and suddenly grew much bigger. Wu Kong laughed. <laughs> I can do that too. He shook his body and grew just as big as Erlang. Clouds swirled and wind blew as the two giants fought in the sky. Their weapons banged together all through the night. They were still fighting when the sun rose the next morning. This fight could last forever, thought Wu Kong. I should try a different plan. Wu Kong struck at Erlang one last time, and then jumped back down to earth. He turned himself into a sparrow and perched on a branch. Erlang will never find me now, thought Wu Kong. He looked up and saw a hawk. The hawk swooped toward him. Oh no! Thought Wu Kong. That's Erlang. Wu Kong dived into a stream. He turned himself into a fish and swam in the water. But then a crane flew over the stream. The crane swooped down at the water. Its mouth was wide open. Wu Kong shot out of the stream. He changed back into himself and ran down a hill. I'll turn myself into a temple, he thought. Then, if Erlang tries to enter, I'll bite him. Wu Kong's eyes became windows, and his mouth became a door. He turned his tail into a flagpole. A moment later, Erlang came down the hill. When he saw the temple, he scratched his head. Hmm," said Erlang. "I never saw a temple with a flagpole before. This must be Wu Kong. I'll kick in that door." "Oh no!" thought Wu Kong. He'll break all my teeth. Wu Kong changed back into himself and ran. Erlang was right behind him. Up in heaven, the Jade Emperor, the Queen, and Guan Yin watched the chase. The Sage Laozi came over to them. What's going on? He asked, looking down. That monkey, Sun Wu Kong, ate all the peaches from the garden," said the Jade Emperor. Then he defeated our entire army. Erlang is trying to catch him now. 
I can help, said Lauza. He took a metal ring off his arm. He aimed carefully and hurled it down to earth. The ring hit Wukong on the head. The monkey looked dizzy for a moment and then fell to the ground. <laughs> Journey to the West, Chapter 11, Trouble in Heaven. Erlang quickly tied up Wukong and brought him up to heaven. I want Sun Wukong destroyed, said the Jade Emperor. Soldiers tied Wukong to a pillar in a courtyard. They struck him with swords. But his body was as hard as a diamond. The swords shattered. Wukong laughed. <laughs> Your swords can't hurt me. The Jade Emperor turned to a messenger. Bring in the fire gods. Several fire gods entered the courtyard and threw balls of flame at Wukong. The courtyard filled with smoke. But when the smoke cleared, not one hair on Wukong's body was burned. <laughs> Thank you, Wukong laughed. I was feeling a little cold. Gather the Thunder Gods, said the Jade Emperor. Several Thunder Gods entered the courtyard. The Jade Emperor smiled as lightning bolts shot toward Wukong. But even the lightning couldn't harm the monkey. That tickled, said Wukong with a smile. The Jade Emperor shook his head. It seems that Wukong can't be destroyed. That's because he ate all the peaches, said Lauza. Just one peach would make someone live forever. He ate every peach in the garden. The Emperor frowned. Then how will we get rid of him? I have an idea, said Lauza. I'll put him in the large pot I use for making potions. Maybe we can burn him up slowly. Perfect, said the Jade Emperor. Soldiers brought Wukong to a room in Lauza's palace. A large pot sat in the middle of the room. Lauza put Wukong into the pot and then closed the lid. Lauza started a fire under the pot. Day and night he tended the fire. He kept it burning for 49 days. Wukong must have been destroyed by now, thought Lauza. He slowly took the lid off the pot. Smoke poured from the opening, and Wukong leaped out. The pot fell over. Burning pieces of coal flew everywhere. <coughs> Wukong's eyes were red and he was coughing. <coughs> that smoke was horrible, he cried. <coughs> he pushed Lauza, knocking the sage onto his back. Wukong pulled out his iron bar and smashed everything in the room. Somebody stop him, cried Lauza. Wukong ran out of Lao's palace. Gods and spirits fled as Wukong smashed everything in his path. Lao ran into the Cloud Palace. Your Majesty, Wukong is causing trouble all over heaven, he said. What? cried the Emperor. He's alive? Yes, said Lao I took the lid off the pot because I thought he was burned up. But the fire didn't hurt him at all. This is an outrage, said the Jade Emperor. What are we going to do with that monkey? The Emperor thought for a moment. We must ask Buddha for help, he said. He turned to a messenger. Go to the Western Paradise quickly. 
See if Buddha can come to help us. Flying as fast as he could, the messenger headed toward the Western Paradise. Everybody hid indoors as Wukong ran through heaven. Using his iron bar, he smashed doors and windows and knocked over statues. Suddenly, he stopped. Before him was a huge figure, glowing with golden light. What do you want? asked Wukong. I am Buddha, said the figure. Who are you and why are you causing all this trouble? Wukong smiled. I am Sun Wukong, King of the Fruit and Flower Mountain. I should be the King of Heaven too. I'm going to the Cloud Palace to tell the Jade Emperor to leave. If he doesn't, I'll never stop causing trouble. Journey to the West, Chapter 12, The Bet. Buddha smiled at Wukong. How did you get so powerful? A sage taught me secret formulas, said Wukong. I practiced them for many years. I am now equal to the Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor has been practicing the same formulas for many lifetimes, said Buddha. How can you think you're equal to him? Go back to your mountain now and behave yourself. No, said Wukong. I'm not leaving until I get to rule heaven. Buddha thought for a minute. Sun Wukong, what powers do you have? I can change into other animals, said Wukong. I can soar through the sky on clouds. I can do anything I want. Then let's make a bet, said Buddha. If you win, you can rule heaven. The Jade Emperor will come to live with me in the Western Paradise. But if you lose, you will be punished severely. What do I have to do? asked Wukong. It's simple, said Buddha. He held out his hand. You just have to jump off my hand. <laughs> Wukong laughed. <laughs> That's easy. I can jump across entire oceans. Buddha smiled. Well then, let's see you do it. Wukong stepped up onto Buddha's palm. You're a fool, he said to Buddha. I'm going to jump farther than you could ever imagine. When I return, I'll be the ruler of heaven. Wukong leaped and soared through the air. After a long time, he saw five enormous pillars. He landed in front of them. This must be the end of the world, he said to himself. I'll go back now and tell Buddha to take the Jade Emperor away. Heaven is mine! Wukong was just about to jump back when he thought of something. There's nobody around, he thought. How will I prove that I was here? He tapped his chin. I'll write a note on this pillar. Buddha can come here and check. Wukong plucked two hairs and turned them into a brush and a jar of ink. On one of the pillars, he wrote, Sun Wukong was here. There, said Wukong. Now I'll go and tell Buddha how far I jumped. Wukong leaped once more. After a long time, he landed on Buddha's palm again. I'm back, said Wukong. Tell the Jade Emperor to leave. Buddha frowned. How can you say you're back? You never left my hand. Wukong was confused. Yes, I did. I reached the end of the world. 
There were five enormous pillars. I even rode on one. Come with me and I'll show you. There's no need to go anywhere, said Buddha. Just look down. Wukong looked down. Near the bottom of Buddha's middle finger was the note, Sun Wukong was here. Wukong stomped his foot. It's a trick! You used some sort of magic! It's not a trick, said Buddha. You never left my palm. <laughs> I did! I did! cried Wukong. I jumped all the way to... You lost the bet, Sun Wukong, said Buddha. And now you will be punished. Holding Wukong tightly, Buddha reached down to earth. His hand turned into a mountain, which he placed on top of the monkey. <coughs> Wukong grunted and pushed with all his strength. The mountain started to rise. Buddha pulled a small sheet of magic paper from his sleeve. He laid the paper on top of the mountain. The mountain dropped back down. Buddha turned to the Jade Emperor. Sun Wukong can't lift the mountain now, he said. He will be trapped until his punishment is over. <laughs> <laughs>